folks, things are really heating up in the Middle East, and you may be asking yourself, why is this all happening? How did we get here? It's a complex question. However, one of the main culprits that brought us to this point is the Zionist doctrine, the Zionist mentality. We are God's favorites. God has given us this land. It belongs to us, and we are merely just taking it back for ourselves. We are taking back what is rightfully ours. Now, this is an absurd idea. This would be like saying Greece must reclaim its ancient borders. It's based on a false interpretation of the Bible. The Bible is very plain in and of itself. It teaches that Abraham was a sojourner in the land of promise, that even though he lived in what would later be called Israel and Palestine, he didn't own it yet. He was just sojourning there, that he would one day later um, possess it. It was called the land of promise for reason. He would inherit that promise in the next life in the new earth. Also in the Bible, it says, if you are Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. If you have relationship with Christ, then you're a true Israelite indeed. You are not a Jew outwardly, the Bible says, but inwardly when the circumcision is of the heart and not of the flesh. So what the Bible is getting at is that to be a true Israelite, it's not based on mere lineal descent. It's not based on biology. It's not based on race. It's not based on nationality. It's not based on a creed. It's based on relationship with the Father and the Son and to be true to their teachings and obedient to their will. That's what it is to be a true Israelite according to the Bible. Now, things aren't looking good for Israel right now. Uh, Moody has just downgraded Israel's bonds. They're a step above junk bonds now. So this is gonna make it harder for them to get financing. They are involved in multiple conflicts now with Hamas, with Hezbollah, and with Iran in a triangular war of sorts. In the West, support for Israel is not unified. France's president just called for people to stop uh, giving the state of Israel military aid. There was protests in London uh, recently. In the United States, whether you're liberal or conservative, both groups have factions within themselves that do not support the state of Israel. So these are all big problems for the state of Israel. What we're looking at on the screen is the havoc and mayhem at the hands of the Israeli military. I'm going to share some audio from some podcasts that recently came out. If you want broader context and you want to listen to the entire audio, I'll have links in the description to the various podcasts. I may not support all the views from these various podcasters. Nevertheless, there is a ton of good information, so I encourage you to go listen. So. I personally think that the Israeli regime will strike. I think that they will, it's possible they will strike the nuclear program, but uh, the nuclear program, part of it that has to do with uh, enrichment is well protected. It's deep underground. If the, and the Americans cannot win in the Red Sea, how are they going to win in the Persian Gulf? Where Iran is infinitely more powerful than Ansar Allah or what the West likes to call the Houthis. So we will have Oil and gas prices go through the roof. Not like $150, $200. I'm, th I'm thinking of like $400, $500 above. And then we will have a sudden global economic collapse. That will affect you in Latin America, me in West Asia, Americans in Washington State, South Africans, Australians, and people everywhere our lives will change dramatically and probably permanently. So Iran, in the, Iran has created a balance of terror with the United States through its defense capabilities. And Iran has huge numbers of underground uh, drone and missile bases. And they have hundreds of thousands of missiles 
and hundreds of thousands of drones that can be used. Because remember, all these underground bases were not designed for Israel. They were designed for the United States when they had taken Iraq and Afghanistan and they were in the Persian Gulf. So Iran has been preparing itself for something very big for very long as a deterrence. Despite Israel's confidence following the use of the pager attacks and the assassination of Nasrallah and killing several senior leadership, there still is, I, I think, a bit of an error of panic because the, the, situation, the situation is spun out of their control. They're not able to, call, to really d dictate and direct what's happening, that uh, the enemy, Hezbollah, and the Houthis have a role. I mean, just, just today we've had, you know, first you had the larger rockets fired uh, into Haifa, and then short time later, Houthis followed up with another ballistic missile that's inbound. So the, the sirens are going off all the time now in Israel. That, that wasn't happening two years ago, uh, not at all. So uh, the, the, the daily life of the Israelis is uh, becoming more stressful. Is um, Israel using the United States <clears throat> to expand its borders or is the United States using Israel to kill Arabs or is there some truth to both of these? Israel's doing what Israel's going to do. Uh, look, the United States is in a position to stop it. We won't, but the reason we won't is because of the political clout uh, that Israel has achieved in the United States through the work of uh, groups like AIPAC, as well as uh, other uh, prominent uh, American citizens who are Jewish and, and strongly pro-Zionist. For proof of this claim, go to a Tucker Carlson interview with Senator Massey, where he explains that all the politicians have an APAC handler. Uh, Israel's been doing its own thing. If you, if you know, I remember having a discussion back in 2003 when I was teaching a senior crisis management seminar for the U.S. State Department uh, anti-terrorism assistance training program, and, and dealt. I dealt with uh, uh, eight different countries that year. All uh, several of them were from the Middle East. And all we're trying to figure out what the hell was our strategy and in going into Iraq. And they, they were shocked to learn we didn't have a strategy. So the, the notion that the United States is being driven by some long-term vision of what it's trying to accomplish in the Middle East, no, we're just scrambling around trying to uh, plug, plug the holes in the dike uh, that have sprung leaks. Uh, we're not, um, th this, we, we, we didn't see and anticipate the attacks on October 7th uh, that took place by Hamas. And then in the immediate aftermath, we did everything we could to enable the Israelis to go out and kill uh, Palestinians instead of trying to find a genuine peaceful path forward. I'll, I'll, I'm going to take a different tact on this. I don't think they were duped because the United States is fully cognizant of everything Israel plans to do, wants to do, is doing, uh, will do. Um, there's an intimacy between Israel and the United States that make it impossible for Israel, uh, whether formally or informally, to keep America out of the loop. We know everything. We knew about the pagers. We knew about everything. We know about everything. We knew um, about the pagers before they exploded and killed children? 100%. We may not have known exactly the decision that was made to put that in, but uh, I can guarantee you that the NSA and... Uh, and, and other uh, American, uh, the CIA were involved in this. The, the same with Stuckniks, you know, the virus that, we, that was used, that, that was jointly developed by the United States and Israel. Uh, we had the Israelis build a test facility in the Negev Desert where they replicated the uh, Iranian centrifuges so that we could test the effectiveness of this virus. We know everything. There is no gap between okay. Israel and the United States on this. Okay. We, back, to where policy, you were, back to where you were before I interrupted you about the pager. Pardon the interruption, what are these repeated lies that Israel has told to the United States? If you wouldn't mind, please leave a comment so that we can all familiarize ourselves with these claims. Policy-wise, we continue to labor under the pretense that we can influence the Israelis, uh, even though we've been lied to by them over and over again. We know what Israel's policies are. Nothing Israel's doing is taking us by surprise. But we like to believe that 
you know, the United States can put pressure on Israel. So I, I'm not going to say that our diplomacy was a facade. What I'm going to say, it was uh, dangerously naive and very deceptive of us because diplomacy isn't just about what we're trying to get Israel to do. It's what we led the Iranians and Hezbollah and Hamas to believe we could get Israel to do. And they bought into it. Hassan Nasrallah agreed to a ceasefire right before he was murdered by the Israelis. This ceasefire was brokered by the gentleman you just mentioned, this, this dual citizen. Um, you know, so today, no one trusts the United States. We will never be trusted in the region again on issues of this nature because it is clear that we cannot control Israel. Israel will do whatever it wants to do. And more importantly, we know what Israel is getting ready to do. And yet we're pretending to the rest of the world that, you know, we, we can somehow contain this problem. We can't. Israel is literally out of control.